comments and contributions to the documents. Uh, we had it easy. Ours was the most interesting scenario. In fact, a quote from one of the audience members was, this is one of the most optimistic scenarios, but caution is in order. Now, by virtue of having this good scenario, we had much better, much younger and better looking people in the room than in the other workshops. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, and uh, there was a fundamental presence of civil society and students as opposed to a government or a big business in the room. Uh, I'm not sure if that is representative of the outcomes that came from there. But basically, uh, the uh, uh, proposal here is that by 2020, social networks, mobile technologies, and cloud computing had evolved with all the promise foreseen in 2010. And this led us to an internet where many more uh, people had gone online, and those billions of people had joined social networking platforms. And on top of that, the users were not only um, are generating and controlling uh, most of the information of the internet, but also exercise all sort of editorial controls over that information. So this multimedia protection, uh, production by users, uh, really created a new flourish of content for the internet. Uh, but there were some issues and non-issues in this uh, scenario, uh, however optimistic um, it looked. For example, uh, many of the value questions were proposed by audience members. Uh, uh, proposals along the lines of uh, watching for privacy, autonomy, uh, discussing the identity of uh, people of different ages and uh, uh, backgrounds on the internet. Uh, how about the uh, copyright and the intellectual property of user-generated content? What happens with diversity, with freedom of expression? Uh, how about censorship uh, by other users, not necessarily by governments? and certainly the editorial control that uh, the markets can exercise or the communities of users. Uh, there was a key question, uh, perhaps coming from civil society groups. Are users in this scenario appropriately represented in internet governance, either directly through intermediaries or via markets? And also in this internet world that we're envisioning for 2020, do we think that it's going to be still, as it is today, very English spoken and US centric? Or this is not necessarily the case, considering that there will be billions more coming online from developing nations. So, also it was important to consider that uh, in a very um, traditional uh, bi-party uh, system in the United States, perhaps there was room uh, for uh, more variety in the political discourse and the suggestion of perhaps having an internet party joining the Republicans and the Democrats for elections uh, would be something of interest uh, to the country in 2020. Uh, so what was the outcome? What were the recommendations uh, by the discussants? Well, first, that users must help other users be proficient online with the help of volunteer organizations, civil society, and even more formal programs. And that user control should not come at the expense of privacy, copyright, and most importantly, the protection of the most vulnerable people in online communities. So the idea is that in 2020, the IGF should focus on education, awareness, and best practices, and that certainly we should rely more on smart user engagement, for example, crowdsourcing and social research. So the IGF should promote more inclusive and diverse participation, and yet ensure that it continues to offer egalitarian participation uh, to the community. Thank you.